Okay, now that we've adjusted the base running airflow, we've almost doubled the amount of air the PCM is going to come in through the throttle body. So now we're going to try to start the car up, see if it starts up and if the PCM can hold this idle on its own now without us touching the throttle pedal. There we go. So now we see the PCM obviously puts the proper amount of air in. We don't have to touch the throttle pedal. Now the next test will be to see if we blip the throttle, if we goose it, can the PCM maintain the idle. So we have just a minor smidge of hanging there, but let's see when it learns, if it corrects for it, or if in fact we might need to add some. Okay, so what we see there is that it's hanging just a little bit when we blip the throttle. Let's take a look at what we have to do to correct for that. Okay, so now we've got a degree of success there, where now what we've got is a car that'll start up, it'll idle, and it'll sit there and idle fine. Now what we want to do is address that ignition uh, timing issue, because what we've got, we get the car, starts, it runs fine, it sits there at a steady idle, but when we goose the throttle, what'll end up happening is, again, in those idle ignition timing advance tables, they're set up for a high vacuum cam. So since this is a lower vacuum, there's a little more advance in there than we want. And again, advance, the more advance you've got at certain speeds, there's always a point of diminishing returns, but generally a little more timing advance at idle can translate to a little more torque. So that's what we want to do. We want to remove torque to get this engine to slow down a little bit. So that's what we're going to do is come off of those uh, timing values. And you'll see in the table, of course, we'll go back to those tables uh, separately there. And you'll see how obviously they've got them separated out by engine speed. So what we're going to do is lower the values that are just above idle. So we're going to set the correct ignition timing advance that we need to maintain our steady idle speed. But what we'll do is bring back the advance so that when the engine's decelerating, coming back from a higher engine speed, that this helps pull it back despite the added airflow. So that's what we're going to do is we need the airflow for stability. But if we keep that same timing value and we're going to have too much torque, the idle speed will hang. So by taking that advance away, a little less torque on the way down while we're decelerating, but then just as we're coming to idle, we'll have the proper amount of advance in, torque will be right where we need it, and we'll get that steady idle. So let's do that. Let's change those tables, then we'll apply it, make the change, start it, run it. You'll see exactly what happens. So I think you'll like this.